This is our character. This is the animation we are going to play with. The first step of working with physical work is assigning physical bones to your character, which will be used when doing calculations. For that, we need to add a bone mapper component to the topmost bone driven by the animation. If the top driven bone is not obvious, we need to check the properties of the animation. This is the file where the animation resides. Let's find it in the folder view. Here it is. And this is the topmost bone driven by the animation. Pelvis. Let's add a bone mapper component to this bone of our character. After the component has been added, it takes control over playing the animation in play mode. The slider also allows positioning within the animation. To create initial bones, we need to press the Create button. They are barely visible on the screen. If we disable the rendered mesh, we can see the physical bones better. They are initially red. Press Analyze Bone Hierarchy. Some bones turn green, but some still stay red. Red means the bones haven't been understood by Bone Mapper. In this particular case, this is because in the original bone hierarchy, some parts that are normally represented by one bone were represented as two objects. Bone mapper component can go through the animation and fuse those pairs of bones that barely move with respect to each other into one. All bones have turned green now. The next step in the preparation to doing physical calculations is unifying bone transforms. For this you need to press Unify Bone Transform. It changes the bone transforms in such a way so that if you place the character in a deep pose, all the bones will have their transforms aligned. This is needed for doing some calculations down the line. Next, we can give bones some reasonable sizes. Press Set Suggested Bone Sizes. Now our character looks more realistic. Bone sizes determine inertia and mass properties, and those take part in calculations. If the sizes of some bones don't look right to you, you can change them now, but you can also change the mass properties later in a more convenient way. Our character is ready to be converted into a single, stand-alone physical character that we are going to work with. What's important at this point is that if the animation is a complete walk cycle, we need to set this checkbox, because this cannot be easily deduced automatically. In this case, the animation is a complete walk cycle, so set the checkbox. Create physical skeleton. A new game object in the hierarchy has been created, and the old character got disabled. Now, if we exit the play mode, this new physics character should stay. But if it doesn't, we can always copy and paste it. I'm gonna copy it just in case. Okay, it has stayed, but if it didn't, I could just paste it like that. This new character has a lot of interesting functionality and this is where we are going to do most of the work. It has its own game cameras that track the character movements.
you can change the camera's ear. They are controlled in pretty much the same way as in Unity.